<laughs> um, this is a, a building where I got my degree, um, and I did my PhD from 1992 to 1997 here. So, uh, and this is the second time I uh, I came back to this building. Uh, I don't remember uh, when I was here again. Um, it was uh, 2000 or something like that. And I uh, it was a small seminar. Uh, you know, coming back and driving through this uh, uh, back road. My navigation said I need to go through the campus drive, and I said I know better. <laughs> so I uh, drive through the back door, back street. Uh, you know, it brings all the memory back. And someone said, uh, um, yeah, Professor said, uh, and, uh, President Kim um, there, because he spent his time in Cleveland, so he comes uh, back to Cleveland time to time. <clears throat> so I um, uh, went to, I think, one of the chapel uh, spoke at uh, Welcome uh, you know, uh, to have a chance to talk. I study uh, 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 construction and architectural industry as uh, part of my research program. So, uh, you will see some of it uh, as part of the talk today. Uh, let's, pray. let's pray. Dear God, uh, thank you for uh, bringing us all together today. Uh, you are uh, the creator of all things. Uh, you are the uh, inventor of all good ideas. Um, you are the perfect entrepreneur. You are um, the designer of all good things. Mm -hmm. So, Father God, we are here to learn from you. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, we, I simply ask, humbly ask you to use this time uh, to uh, touch us, to change Amen. us, to transform Amen. us, uh, to show us the way so that we can be used better, uh, more effectively uh, for your own kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, so, I ask that you will... Uh, be with me as I, I share my thoughts so that I do not speak on my behalf but only speak uh, your truth uh, in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, today's uh, topic is managing a manager in God's kingdom. So uh, I'd like to start. Uh, okay. um, Genesis 1, 28, uh, be fruitful and increase in numbers, fill the earth and uh, subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. I think this is a universal command. This is God's command to mankind that we need to be a good manager, good uh, steward. We need to mobilize resources. We are supposed to build and construct the world and that's how I see management. Um, so, uh, what is uh, managing? Uh, what is management? Uh, I like to quote, uh, it was originally from a uh, Korean book, uh, the picture there, uh, Professor Sok Chol Yoon, Sok Chol Yoon, uh, he was my mentor when I was at uh, Seoul National University, and um, this book changed my life. Uh, I was a sophomore, uh, and when I went to uh, university, uh, college, <clears throat> my uh, thought was I was, gonna, I was going to do economics major. I didn't know any better. Uh, so I thought I'm going to study economics and I'm going to take the uh, national exam to become a government, government officer, civil servant. And, um, and, and I thought that's what uh, you know, the smart kid is supposed to do, right? You know, so you go to economics and then you take this exam. Uh, right? uh, then, uh, but then, you know, my, uh, um, uh, my uh, score, uh, you know, uh, last, last month, um, uh, uh, economists had um, had a story about Korea. They, every once in a while, they have very penetrating stories about Korea, uh, and uh, uh, it starts like this: every every uh, every year, one day a year, uh, everything stops in Korea, uh, and that's a sunum day. You know? <laughs> and uh, police stops working, you know, uh, chasing after criminals because they have to transport these students to to the school uh, to take their test and. You know, government stop functioning, parents stop doing everything, and they go praying, and, and this is like a one-shot day, right? You know, you have one shot, and that, that determines your life. And they said it's a very efficient way of determining someone's life. Uh, if you think about that and compare that with the uh, United States, uh, this is a, a, a country of a, a second opportunity. You mess up uh, in high school, you, you're given another chance, you have 
many, many reset buttons. It's a very redemptive culture. It's very uh, Christian culture. Uh, the God always gives us a uh, second chance. Uh, and that's essentially the story of gospel. Uh, you know, we messed up from the very beginning, and God is, you know, giving us again and again second chance, another chance, and then just He showed up Himself and said, you know, I'm giving you another chance. And so that's the gospel. Uh, and American culture is all about giving us a second chance. Anyway, so um, I messed up my chance, uh, and I ended up at the business school, not the economics. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was, I, I thought I was going to uh, retake it. Uh, um, the exam by a high school teacher didn't know any better. He said, uh, you know, business and economics, they're the same. Why don't you go to business school? <laughs> I said, all right. So I went to the business school, and then I start studying uh, for uh, the, uh, the exam. You know, I was nuts. So I went to the library the day after I finished the exam. Uh, I studied, uh, you know, I bought books on constitution, books on um, the, the trade law, and and economics, go one on one, and uh, start studying. So that's how I spent my freshman year. I was uh, studying that, and then I met this man. You know, uh, he came to the classroom. Um, you know, uh, March, early March, one of the classes, quantitative approach to management, and um, he's like it was different. You know, uh, and he started talking about uh, universal law and. Physics, and he has a PhD in physics. Uh, uh, his undergraduate was physics, and then he has a background in engineering and computer science, and he ends up doing uh, management. So, and he started talking about something totally different, you know, something that I never heard about, about management. I said, I gotta check him out. So I went to the library, and then I checked out this book, the Hangungalun Kyungyeokjuk Sabuik Tool. So the framework of management um, thinking or something like that, right? Uh, and then this is the very first sentence. Uh, I still remember Korean version. 모든 학문을 하면 뭐라고 서문이 뭐라고 the preface says, says something like this. 모든 학문이 기초에서 연연해서 출발해서 응용으로 흐른다면 경영학은 응용 학문의 종착점입니다. 왜냐하면 경영학은 신이 인간에게 주어진 모든 자원을 총동원해서 사람이 사람답게 살수 있도록 도와주는 학문이 경영학입니다. It's just this is what he says. Uh, uh, if academic disciplines stem from basic ones to applied ones, management is the final destination of applied discipline because management deals with the re realistic survival of human race by mobilizing all the resources from the nature. Just blew me away. Said, Management is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm going to do my management. Uh, and uh, so that's why I'm doing management. Th this is management. Uh, and uh, this is God's command. Uh, God asked us to uh, mobilize uh, resources that God has given to us. Uh, we use technology to domesticate that resource. You know, you have a stone. Uh, we talk about technology. Uh, management and technology go together. Uh, and um, what we do with uh, technology is simply that we transform raw material, raw resource that have limited values. When you domesticate it, you, when, you, when you build technology into it, all of a sudden the usefulness of that material uh, uh, multiplies. And that's what we do all the time, if you think about it. Financial derivative, you know, we blame it. But when it is done right, what it does is that it amplifies and multiplies the usefulness of the financial resources we have. That's what leverage is all about. When it is done too much, right, uh, it can be very dangerous. Um, so uh, we are managing this world in its reality. By doing it, we are revealing his kingdom. Mm. That's what we should do, managers, the Christian manager. Mm. I uh, sometimes ask people, who are you, right? Uh, are you Christian or are you a manager? Or are you Christian, Christian manager, Christian manager, or Christian manager? This is the difference, right? Uh, if you're a Christian manager, uh, that means uh, you're a Christian. You happen to be a manager. Uh, your Christian manager means that your manager, you happen to be a Christian. Then if you're a Christian manager, then these two things are not separable. 
And that I think is what JBS is all about, right? Being a manager and being a good Christian cannot be separated. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a professor and I'm Christian. And to me, these two things are not separable. For a long time, I, uh, I had this idea that you know, professorship for me is a, a means to an end and I just earn my living by doing business, uh, teaching. And uh, I, I proudly uh, said uh, uh, my real job is teaching Bible at church. One day, I was praying and God told me that if that is the case, why don't you quit your job, go to the seminary, and uh, be serious about it what your real job is. I said, God, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I like my job. I like teaching. Um, and I liked prompted me, you know, in my heart that there was a reason that I made you in such a way that you became a professor. There was a reason. You should take it very seriously. Right? So that was around 2002. I'm a slow learner. It took like five years after I became professor, that I actually was called to be a professor. It's my vocation, it's my call. And I really have to seriously think about what does that mean. And I really, really began uh, studying seriously. Uh, so uh, I hope that and that would happen to you too, as a manager, uh, as a business, business person. So, but you know, we are limited. Uh, we all know, you know, uh, Herbert Simon said we are we are limited uh, rationality. You know, we are we are God is all powerful, all knowing, all you know. Uh, but uh, we are not. Uh, so the only thing we can do is that to see the glimpse of God's glory time to time. Right? We wish we can do it all the times. You know, we think that the people in the Bible walk with God. Experience the glory of God all the times, but you know what we have is that uh, you know if you think about life of Abraham, his life is condensed to how many chapters, you know, uh, and and probably that's the highlight of his life. And God showed up once, and then didn't show up another ten years, yeah. and then God showed up again. You know, you think God is not speaking to you frequently now. Uh, and I think God is doing his part. He's just doing it. So, we want to see the glimpse of kingdom. But, you know, that power of seeing the glimpse of kingdom is good enough to sustain us, to do what we do. And that's what the world needs. The world is a hopeless place. Uh, really, it's desperate for good ideas, desperate for hope. I, uh, my school, Temple University, is right in the middle of, if you will, urban ghetto, uh, to North Philadelphia. Uh, two years ago, more than 500 kids got shot and killed in Philadelphia in a year. Um, it's a war zone. There was some kind of gang fight going on that year. Uh, you know, that, that 500 kids being killed, high school kids and college age kids being killed by gun uh, means that more than one person was killed a day. Right? It's terrible. That's where my school is. People, uh, and then, you know, of course, when you first arrive at Temple University, the first thing that they say is that you know, orientation reveals a lot about the school. You know, when I first went to Case Western, the, the first thing I heard, and I still remember, the provost said, I was there, here at Case Western for 17 years, and we never closed school for snow. <laughs> you know, and then he said, buy an SUV, you know. Um, so, oh, okay, so they have lots of snow, you know, you learn that, right? So, first thing I heard uh, when I went to Temple is that this is one of the most safe campus, uh, campuses on, uh, in the country. We have more police on campus than any other campus. Like, okay, oh God. <laughs> that means it's not really safe, right? <laughs> it is actually very safe. Um, can we be desirated? Uh, but when you go there, people are desperate. They're desperately looking for ideas to change the world. Uh, politicians, business people, uh, you know, the not-for-profit, uh, you know, school, university, teachers, entrepreneurs, everyone is looking for ideas. 
And when they see the glimpse of God's kingdom that is manifested through you when you do your work, they go crazy. Wow, you know where the hell that idea came from, right? And, oh, like, you know, how can I, how can I do this? So you, you think about what your job is. Your job is showing the power of God's work, right? Um, have you seen a movie, Ramen Girl? Um, it's a movie that you should watch if you're particularly interested in a Japanese culture. So there's a girl who went to Japan uh, because of uh, her boyfriend and got dumped uh, as soon as she arrived. And she had to do something, and so she went to ramen shop and had a perfect ramen. And she wanted to make such a perfect ramen. I'm looking at it, thinking, that's uh, kingdom business. Because what I believe is that in God's kingdom, the perfect ramen exists. Right. See where I'm going? Right. C.S. Lewis said, God has given us the desire for uh, God's kingdom, God's, you know, um, God. And that is this perfect thing. But nobody has seen it. Perfect picture. He goes on with the examples, right? Perfect picture. Perfect vacation. Perfect children. Perfect wife. No one has seen it. Nobody experienced it. We, but we all desire it. We have this crazy idea that there is such a thing as a perfect vacation. And, you know, you go and look at all these travel magazines. They try to tell you that we have seen this perfect vacation and we're going to give it to you. But the moment you arrive, the moment you're at the reception desk of a hotel who's not paying <laughs> any attention to your needs, you realize I was deceived, right? <laughs> That's what this world wants. They want to see the perfect world of God's kingdom. And when Steve Jobs introduced iPhone, everybody went nuts. Why? Because they feel that this is something perfect. Of course it is not perfect. But that's our desire. You know, of course... I don't use black. I, I don't use iPhone anymore. I use BlackBerry because everybody else has the iPhone. It's not fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but how do we do that? Not by our efforts. If we do that, then we are not any different from any other manager. Steve Jobs got cancer because he tried too hard. He drove everybody around him crazy. Right? He humiliated these people. But he knew how to drive these people and then get the best out of these people. But it wasn't really a good way of dealing with it, right? The people around him felt terrible, you know, uh, humiliated, did belittled. But that was his way of doing things. So not by efforts, but by grace. Yeah. And, and it is only possible, I believe, in union with God. Amen. And Jesus showed, when he was on earth, that it is possible. That in union with God, we can have real living experience of God's kingdom and show it to the world in which we live. And your job as a business person is to do it in your own world. It doesn't matter what you do. If you're a musician, you do it in your own music arena. If you're an artist, you're just manifesting God's perfect kingdom through your art. If you're a writer, you do it through your writing. If you're a business person, you do it through your management. We do it by living the present reality of God's kingdom made available through the faith in Christ in everything we do. Living reality of God's kingdom. It is real and it is available today. God's kingdom is not something you go when you, after you die. We are supposed to leave it here and now. Right? God has given it us as a gift. And that gift came with Jesus. So, yet the world we live 
The world we create is a clumsy world. It's not perfect as God has created, as God has intended. Why? Because it was very simple, because of sin. Um, so that's where we are. We are grounded on, in this clumsy, sinful world, do our best, in union with God, through the redemptive work that Jesus did, and manifesting possibility of God's kingdom every day for everything we do. And we do it by propelled, by irresistible vision of that world. The world can get better. So the question is, whose idea is it? You know, the better world. Everybody has an idea of a better world. Steve Jobs has the idea of a better world. Google has an idea of a better world. And you all should have an idea about a better world. And I think that management is actually is all about thinking about those better worlds. So management is about competition of ideas. Ideas about the better world. When you win the world in the marketplace with your idea about the better world, you're making a statement to the world through your products and services and saying that I think I can make this world a better place by creating this product, by creating this service, by creating this organization available to you. So please take it. If your idea is tested and contested at the marketplace, consumers are making decisions how good you are. They are giving you a grade by buying your product. Okay? And that's what it is. Let me give you an example. This is supposed to be a lecture, so you're now <coughs> from shipping here. Tokomo. It's the second largest Japanese company. Uh, it at one point was the largest uh, Japanese company. It was uh, bigger than uh, Toyota at once, and now it's the second largest. So they do mobile phone service. And um, late uh, 1990s, they realized that, that in the post-industrial society, a phone needs to be more than a phone. So they uh, searched many different ways, and they said the phone is to give joy. And they invented I iMo. This is the first, world first mobile phone that had internet integrated. So Japanese people never had internet uh, before this. Uh, so uh, they saw internet on their mobile phone before their desktop computers. So their email and you know all the uh, weather and sports and all things came through iMo. Then they started using it as a wallet. They started using it. So, 2005, they did a survey to their consumers. Look at this, this statistic. Um, said, uh, 60, 70 percent of people use mobile phone as a phone. That means about one third of them never use their mobile phone as a phone. 100 percent use phone as an email device, and about two thirds of them use it as an email device and web. And the most popular application was not phone. Uh, there was a, a train timetable. So Docomo said, uh, this is a crisis. I mean, they were doing really, really well. But then uh, senior executive said, uh, this, is, this is telling us something that we should change. We thought we are a phone company, but the data suggests that we are not a phone company. And we don't know what we are. So they started searching for their identity. They became a bank because they real, uh, they actually became a bank. They registered as a consumer <coughs> bank because they realized that people are using mobile phone as a payment system, and sometimes they do not have enough money on their balance, so they they couldn't use it. You know, like a Japan is cash country, and you know, like a vending machine is uh, invented in Japan, so they love vending machines. You can buy anything in Japan through a vending machine, and you need to carry <coughs> coins. So, uh, you know, I hate coins. I, I hate carrying anything in my pocket. So I, there's absolutely nothing in my pocket. But in, when you go to Japan, um, someone like me is in big trouble because you need to have coins to drink, to do anything. So all salarymen, that the male, um, I mean, they carry this small wallet with coins. It's very unmanly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
But they all carry this and they have coins and they use this to drink. Um, they solve this problem by having mobile phone as a just a way and then they can buy all the drinks and this and that through vending machine. Vending machine. But then you know the Docomo realized that some people uh, cannot buy it because they didn't have enough balance on their card, they didn't need to charge it. So they said, why don't we just become a bank so that we can give instant uh, micro loan to the consumers when they do not have enough money. And then they realized that they, in order to do that, they need, actually needed to become a bank. So they became a bank. And then they start asking this question, like, is a mobile phone is really a mobile phone? And they said, no. So after about a year, they came up with a word that says mobile phone is a lifestyle infrastructure, whatever that means. Right? They don't know what it means, but they said that's what it is. That's our idea of a better world. If we conceive mobile phone, mobile device, as a mobile lifestyle supporting infrastructure, then we think we can make the world a better place. KDDI is the second largest mobile phone operator in Japan. About the same time, they discovered the same pattern. Their answer, their idea was that mobile phone is a portable personal entertainment device. Two different ideas. Now, if you think about it, 2005, 2006, smartphone wasn't there, iPhone wasn't there. You know, both of them were wrong. iPhone came and then, you know, the future of a mobile device is iPhone, right? Um, back then, they were competing. They were constructing a new world, the world that we have never seen before. They had an idea, you know, the technology people made the prediction that mobile device will be small enough, powerful enough, that everybody will carry, and the internet will be converged with mobile device. So what kind of world are we going to create? It was the job of the business leader to actually think about it. And then they are making bets on their idea. They make a statement. We think the world will be a better place if we device, our device is becoming a mobile lifestyle infrastructure. The other company said, we think the world will be a better place if everybody carries movies and music in their pocket. That's their idea. Right? And we compete. And then and the market speaks. And then a dominant design emerged, and then we shape the world. And world is shaped like that, right? You know, and, and LG and Samsung fight over who has thinner TV, right? What does that mean is that they think world with a thin TV is a better place, <laughs> for better or worse, right? So they compete. Have you seen this YouTube LG TV commercial? A guy is uh, stealing TV, walking 90 degree perpendicular angle, a security TV, so when you actually look at it, it doesn't look like he's carrying anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, so he's running away with a, uh, you know, LCD TV. Uh, that was an LCD TV commercial. Very, very clever. But that's their idea. How silly is it, right? They mobilize millions and billions of dollars to compete on that silly idea that who has the thinnest and biggest TV screen? Can we give better idea to the world? And I'm not you know, making fun of those people. It's a serious job. <laughs> so the question here is, what is a mobile phone? And you all should be part of this game. Right? Whichever industry you are in, this is the essence of management. Now, that's how I see it. But the current view of management is not like that. We typically see business management is all about money, it's all about greed and excessive uh, executive compensation and arrogant executives and consultants and moral hazard and we think about Wall Street as completely corrupted. Or when we think about management as uh, management being incredibly boring and bureaucratic, right? Incompetent, pa paper pusher. Uh, so that's how the world think about management. It's a two divergent view. One is very competent cold-blooded, money-sucking engine. <laughs> the other one is incompetent, you know, bureaucratic, uh, you know, the uh, <laughs> These two, two views dominate the idea about management. There was a TV commercial uh, several years ago by uh, FedEx. 
They hired an MBA, and then um, so it's a TV commercial. A company hired an MBA student and said, uh, "Can you do this? Like make a copy of uh, you know Xerox or anything?" No, no, no. I, I, I don't know how to do it. I'm an MBA. <laughs> you know, uh, like, can you do this? No, no, no. I don't know how to do it because I'm an MBA, right? It was like. Keep saying that I don't know anything because I'm an MBA, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 then FedEx says we can do all of those. Right? So come to us. Right? That's that's a that's a view that the corporate world has. You know, these MBAs don't know how to do. They they just know how to do the smart talk. And they know how to put together nice looking PowerPoint presentations. Even that is not really good. You know. <laughs> So what we need to do is we need to redeem this field called management. So how do we do that? 